Over the last couple of months, we have seen a lot more action in the affordable ultrabook segment. If you remember, the Samsung Series 5 got the IV Bridge update, and that is available in the market for about 55,000 rupees. Samsung's T11, the 11 inch Ultrabook, is available for about 50,000 rupees. If you remember, we had reviewed that very recently. Now, this is the HP NV4 Ultrabook. This is the 1002 TX model, to be precise. And this is available in the market for about 58,000 rupees. Let's just start off with how this laptop looks, what the build quality is, and what you're finally getting for what you've paid for. On the top is the very classy brushed metal finish. Traditionally, HP has been very, very insistent on in using glossy finishes on their laptop. This time around, they have done a complete turnaround. We are very happy about the fact that this has a non-glossy finish. However, the surprising bit is, as you can probably see, this one does catches a lot of sponges. Now, we do, can't really understand why, but you will need to carry a cloth with you in case you are one of those people who like to keep their laptops very clean. But there's no taking away from the fact that this looks very classy and probably looks a lot more expensive than what the laptop actually is. We'll run you through the port placement here. On this side you have the Ethernet port, the HDMI, as well as two USB ports, one of which is a USB 3.0 port, as well as the SD card slot. A couple of LEDs here for the hard drive activity as well as the power state. This one is blinking because the laptop currently is in standby mode or sleep mode. Separate jacks for microphone and headphone in this particular laptop and another USB port here. This is the power point. Turning it around, we usually don't really see this much effort put into Ultrabooks on their base. The last time we actually turned around an Ultrabook and felt good about it was with the Dell XPS 13 which had the carbon fiber finish. This one, again, very very well done. There are two color options in the market. This is the red one, the crimson red one. There's another one in black, so the entire Ultrabook will be of the, sim uh, of the same color finish. Interestingly, what HP has done here is with the port placement. A lot of ports to suck in air and a lot of ports for the fan to push out air from. This laptop comes with the CoolSense feature, the 2.0 version, not the 1.0 version. So that kind of helps. In real life testing, we realize that this one doesn't really heat up as it should. The, the only thing about this port placement is if you keep this on your lap, essentially you'll probably block out these two sides of the port of this of this wing. And that does affect the cooling a little bit in that scenario, but if you're keeping it on a table or you're careful enough of not blocking these with your knee or your thighs, then this laptop should remain really cool no matter what you put it through. The fan is surprisingly not very loud even when it's uh, running at full RPM. Opening it up and the same kind of brushed metal finish continues here around the keyboard. The touchpad has a very very nice metallic finish to it with a circular design. I don't know if you can probably make it out through the video but this looks very very classy. There is no shiny element to it. Again the same smudge catching tendency of this particular finish is surprising. However, the disappointing bit is the bezel. The bezel around the laptop is completely glossy. We can't really understand the funda for that because the rest of the laptop has a very very classy brush metal finish. Why go with the glossy finish here? Because then this laptop again becomes as resource, as maintenance hungry as probably any other glossy laptop in the market. However, coming back to the good parts, the keyboard on this one is very well spaced out. There's enough key travel on all the keys. We really got used to it very, very quickly. Normally, certain keyboards take some time getting used to. This one had absolutely no issues at all. The speaker, is here the Beats Audio logo is here. This is the power key for you. Very very well done laptop hinges. So even if you push it completely back, the laptop will not rise up from the back. It's something that we saw in the YOT 11 recently. Apart from that, this is a 14-inch display, so it has very compact uh, form factor. However, where this has an advantage over the Samsung Series 5 is the fact that it's less thick because this one doesn't have an optical drive like most ultrabooks don't whereas the Samsung Series 5 offers that. Apart from that this laptop should 
do very well in every scenario it looks brilliant it feels very high quality and ideally you wouldn't regret paying for this particular laptop let's just run you through some of the specs on the nv41002 tx this one's powered by the iv bridge core i5 clocking at 1.7 gigahertz it's got 4 gigs of ram there's another market there's another model in the market with 6 gigs of ram but that's officially not in india as yet we've seen it on the hp us site unfortunately we can't really understand why but this particular model comes with windows 7 home basic os now for the laptop that's almost 60000 rupees well market price would be around 58000 we can't really understand why this does not have the home uh, the premium version but thankfully whatever it is the home basic is also 64 bit so that should be a problem this one has a 500 gig hard drive as well as a 32 gig flash storage for your caching tasks which kind of makes everything quicker the interesting bit is the radeon hd 7670m graphics card now this one is very very superior to what the graphics of the Nvidia GT offered on the Samsung series 5 Ultrabook our detailed review will kind of give you the scores and the comparison graphs between the two but from what we've tested till now this one is a couple of steps ahead of that one in terms of gaming performance so if you're a gamer even a casual gamer who wants to use this Ultrabook for that task this is the one to go now there's another thing the battery test on this one In our benchmark test was relatively similar to the Samsung series 5 IV bridge about 220 225 minutes in the high load test however in the real life use it scenario this one is giving about 7 hours now when i say real life use it scenario i mean a typical office environment work you open your docs you open your web browsing stuff no music in the background no video playback this one will give you about 7 hours which considering the performance it offers it's excellent